Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is V. As some of you may know, I'm currently working as a research assistant in stem cells and genetics at Cambridge. And in this video, I just wanted to talk about how I started applying to research assistant or technician jobs in the UK. I started applying for jobs when I was still doing my master's. And I remember it being an extremely stressful time because my visa would end not too long after I graduated and I literally had no idea where and how to start applying for jobs. So this video would be a little guide on how to kickstart your job application journey. In this video, I won't be going into the details of how to write a CV, a cover letter, or how to prepare for an interview because those would be separate videos on their own. However, I will be sharing some of the websites that I found useful for job searching some of the things to keep in mind when you're applying for jobs, especially if you're an international student who needs to consider visas and also whether or not the company can sponsor you. And finally, just some tips on how I personally kept track of all of my job applications. Okay, so first things first, where do you look for jobs? Most universities or companies tend to advertise their research assistant or technician jobs on more generic websites like jobs.ac.uk, indeed.com, or even LinkedIn. These platforms are generally a good starting point to just have a skim through of the potential job opportunities out there. The website I personally found to have the most relevant job options was jobs.ac.uk. I literally just typed into the search bar research assistant and then filtered my search into the health and medical discipline. And from there, I already managed to get a couple of hundred options. And you can also add additional filters if you want based on location or salary. But for me, I just kept those two options pretty open. Something else that might help is to just turn on the job notification alert on these job searching platforms to just get notified of any potential new job openings. I also quite like LinkedIn because I literally just keyed in research assistant and I would get notified of a bunch of new job openings on new research assistant positions pretty much every other day. Honestly, I find more than half of these these notifications pretty irrelevant, but it does increase my exposure to different companies and also job opportunities out there. And on a note of LinkedIn, I also get to see where some of my friends are currently working at. So if I click into these companies, I also get recommended very similar company pages that I could check out and they could potentially be companies that I'm interested in applying in. So you might also want to look into alumni from your previous schools or university to just see where they're at right now. You never know that maybe you might find a company in which your values align with and they might also have a job opening available. For certain job openings posted on LinkedIn, there's sort of this quick apply function where you don't really need to go through the hassle of filling in a bunch of personal details, sending in essays, etc, etc. So it's just quite a handy tool if you already have a CV at hand and you just want to broaden your chances of getting accepted or shortlisted to an interview. I've actually known quite a few people who have been offered job interviews and also been offered their current job positions because they've applied through LinkedIn. So I think it's definitely quite a valuable resource to check out. Generally speaking, using more generic job search platforms like LinkedIn or jobs.ac.uk are really helpful in the beginning to give you an idea of which companies and universities are currently offering jobs, right? But the thing is that not all labs will choose to advertise their job openings on these platforms meaning that you may only be able to find out about these jobs through the specific university website or company job opportunity page. So I'd recommend that maybe after having a general look through these general job searching websites to go into the more specific university or company websites to just sort of see if there's anything that's worth looking into or that might spark your interest. Also, if you're currently studying or you're a recent graduate, it's definitely worth looking into the career services that's part of your university because they might also have job application platforms of their own. Recently, I met up with a friend who's currently studying in Cambridge and apparently Handshake is a very common platform that quite a few institutions use. And there are some companies that only exclusively post their job postings on Handshake. And for Imperial, it was Jobs Live. So you can also sign up to their newsletter and you can get updated on any new job openings every day or every week, every month, it's up to you. In my experience with the institutional job application platforms, the options are slightly more limited. And as I'll mention later, for international students, um, a lot of the options are mostly targeted towards home or EU students. So that isn't really applicable to me personally because I need a company that can sponsor my visa. But definitely more on that later on in this video. 
But that's not to say that you shouldn't keep a lookout on these platforms because you really never know that you might just stumble across something that really interests you. In the beginning, this whole job searching process can be really overwhelming and don't worry, you're not alone in feeling this way. Something that helped me stay sane was to come up with a system to keep track of all the job positions that I'm interested in, those that I've applied for, those that I got rejected for, and then those that I've been called for an interview. Once you start applying to more than 5, 10, it gets a little bit overwhelming and difficult to keep track, so definitely a system will really help, but I'll be talking more about that in a later section in this video. Now that I've talked a little bit about where you can find jobs, I can understand that it might be a bit overwhelming since there are so many options. So what I like to do is first filter out the irrelevant jobs. For starters, when I'm scrolling through jobs.ac.uk, for example, after I've typed in research assistant and then filtered my discipline of interest, first thing that I look at is always the project title. Is it something that I'm even mildly interested in and is it relevant to my field of study? For me, I was personally quite open to working in any research field, whether it's genetics, stem cells, or drug development. I was also open to working in both academia or industry, but what I knew I didn't want is to do a dry lab project, so anything that was bioinformatics related, I just did not apply for. So if I see a project title that I find interesting, I click into it. And the second thing that I check is the qualifications required. Many research jobs tend to require a PhD or home office license as a bare minimum, and since I don't have either of those, I don't even bother looking at the job description because it would pretty much just be a waste of my time. However, there is a difference between essential requirements and desirable requirement. For example, a job might say that it is essential to have a master's degree in a relevant field, but it is desirable to have a home office license or experience in certain lab techniques. For job postings like these, as long as I meet all of the essential requirements, and even if I hardly meet any of the desirable requirements, I will still give it a shot and send in my application. So I've now briefly talked about how I filter out irrelevant jobs, but for international students, there's an extra step to consider. And that's whether or not the company or institution that you're applying for can sponsor you. As an international student, you will need a skilled worker visa, or previously known as tier 2 visa, in order to work in the UK. Recently, there's also another visa called the graduate visa, but I'll talk a little bit more on that later on. So in order for you to obtain the skilled worker visa, you first need to get the job, and the company also needs to be a licensed sponsor in order to issue you something called a Certificate of Sponsorship, which is COS. You will need the certificate in order to submit your visa application to work in the UK. So this certificate is not your visa, it's just a supplementary document that you will need to submit along in order to have your visa approved. Very generally speaking, larger companies or institutions like AstraZeneca, GSK, universities like Cambridge, London universities like Imperial, King's, they are all licensed sponsors, but smaller companies or even startups are very unlikely to be licensed sponsors. This is because companies or institutions themselves need to pay a fee in order to be a licensed sponsor, and obviously this isn't a small amount of money, so it is very unlikely that smaller companies would do something like that. I will link below in the description box companies that are licensed and sponsors. Alternatively, there is something now called the graduate visa. It is a visa that international students who graduated from the UK can apply to in order to remain in the UK for an additional two years to search for a job. You can also work under this visa, and very simply put, it is because that you are paying to sponsor yourself. So for example, if you hold a graduate visa and you want to work at a startup company that is not currently a licensed sponsor, you can do that for two years, but after that, they will need to sponsor your skilled worker visa in order for you to remain working in the UK. Now I just wanted to briefly mention the fees of applying for a skilled worker visa. The fee for the visa itself is £700, but you also need to pay something additional which is the health surcharge. And for every year that your contract is, you need to pay £624 for health surcharge. So for example, if your job is a two-year contract, it's 700 plus 624 plus 624. So it'll be a total of £1,948. This is definitely not a small amount of money, and I was personally very lucky that my PI was happy to reimburse this for me. But just note that not all labs will be willing to do this. Some institutions may have schemes that can help you pay for your visa in advance, and you pay them back in installments by paycheck deduction every month. 
So as you're searching for jobs and also eliminating those that are irrelevant to you, it's good to keep track of the jobs that you're planning to apply to, currently applying to and have already applied to. I personally use the default template on Notion and here's just how it looks like on mobile but of course there's also a desktop version available. So here's just what the Notion template looks like on my phone. You can also include your current resume, cover letter, portfolio link, LinkedIn, or anything like that just for your own reference and for you to keep track. So right at the bottom here is where I keep track of all my job applications and in the first column I will put down the university or company name. Then in the second column I put the position that I'm applying for which could be a research assistant, research technician or a graduate program. Next I also include the status of my application which can be that I'm ready to send in my application or I've already applied or I've already signed the contract, or I have an interview scheduled, or I've been rejected and the application will be archived. Next, I also like to include the deadline of each job application, and I always organize my job applications based on the soonest deadline first, so that is what I usually focus on. And I also like to include a link of the job posting and just take note of the job description. So just in case I get called to the interview, it's always a good reminder of the project that I'm applying for, and it just helps with interview preparation. And the final column is just any comments that I need to work on. Of course, there are many other ways to organize your job applications. I also know friends who have used Excel or Google Sheets, and honestly, it's completely up to you as long as you find a system that works. So that's it for this video. I hope it gave you a bit more clarity on how to kickstart your job application process. I'm also planning to make more videos on how to write a CV and also how to prepare for a job interview. So if you're interested in that, please hit the subscribe button below to stay tuned for more research videos. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I really do try my best to respond to all of them. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!